The Y from our Chicago studios, I'm Todd Avega Prekeon. We're expecting this year to be another significant one in space. Private companies are driving development. They're not only launching satellites and supply missions to the International Space Station, but also allowing tourists to live the life of an astronaut even just for 10 minutes. We want to welcome Neil deGrasse Tyson to our show. He's an astrophysicist with a lot of insight and expertise on space and science. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thank you. So you promote science and space exploration. This might be a bit of a broad question, but let's start with why continuing to explore space is important for humanity and for our planet. Yeah, I don't, maybe I'm delusional, but I don't think of myself as promoting anything. What I do, again, this could be delusional. <laughs> what I do is I alert people of the cost of not doing it. All right, I, I, I alert people that however they're thinking about the problem could benefit from a more enlightened posture before they then arrive at their opinion. When I hear someone say, why are we spending money up there when we have problems here on Earth, when up there is the entire universe? And here we are on this, on this moat that we've given the name Earth to, and, and we're, we're trying to claim that we should not go anywhere else in the universe until Earth's problems are solved. I have some news for you. Every single problem that Earth faces now, that, that culture, society, poverty, hunger, all, war, all of that, predates the very first attempt anyone ever made trying to go into space. So uh, to believe that all of a sudden these problems would be now solved if we didn't go into space, I think is very a narrow view of the history of civilization. So I, I just try to put this kind of sort of cosmic perspective in the mix of what it is people say and think. Yeah, and I like how you put that too, of the cost of not doing it. I think that allows people to open their minds a little bit to the consequences of taking that road. You've called the private space movement the billionaire's voice club. We've seen private missions to space that most people think is something they'll never be able to afford. Is it important that space become accessible, not just to the rich, but to the average person? Well, if you look at the history of this kind of exercise, um, if we can go back to the dawn of aviation, a much less costly operation, by the way, but still technologically challenging given the day in which people were trying to think this up. The first people to go on plane flights were the rich and famous, and they get to talk about it at their cocktail parties. So almost every important high-tech thing that lands in civilization is always done first by the rich people. Generally, the first out of the box are not the most accessible, and they're not the most um, affordable. That usually comes later, and I'm okay with that. Let's talk a little bit about why it's so expensive to go to space. For those of us who aren't science experts and space experts, we've been pursuing space flight for more than a century. Why is it so hard and so expensive to continue space exploration? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty simple, and I think Elon Musk has his finger on the pulse here. Up until Elon Musk, uh, well, the, sh the space shuttle was reusable, but not in the way that had been imagined. Elon is really putting the money where the claims were. And that is, we're going to reuse the booster, we're going to reuse the capsule, we're going to reuse it all. Well, all that we can that doesn't burn up in the atmosphere. And by doing so, you bring down the cost. As you bring down the cost, more and more people, businesses, industries, uh, entrepreneurs, will then have access to space for every next day the price drops compared to the day before. And that can be transformative to an industry. So yeah, it'll take time, it's not immediate. But we're witnessing, in this billionaire it's boys race, we are witnessing the birth of an entire economic sector. We should be celebrating that. I hear so many critics of it, and I'm thinking, a new economy? Isn't that what you want? Isn't that what, and they only see the rich people doing it at first? I said, well, give it a chance. I give it a chance. So you that lead price me, will come down. 
Into my final question, though, I'm curious to get your thoughts on what's next then for space exploration. What do you think spaceflight will look like decades from now, say 50 years or 100 years? That's too far. Let me say 30 years, okay? okay? I don't know what 100 years is. But 20 to 30 years, what would be nice is if the solar system, I think, became our backyard. Our backyard. Oh, uh, where are you going to? Oh, oh I'm using a, a few vacations savings and using that to go visit the near side of the moon. There's, a, there's an amusement park there in lower gravity, and it would take <laughs> the whole family, okay? Well, I'm a scientist, and I want to study possible origins of life origins of life on the surface of Mars, strapped together a different configuration of rockets. Wait a minute, I'm an entrepreneur and I want to mine an asteroid. The first trillionaire on Earth, I'm certain of it, will be the first person who mines asteroids. And in fact, NASA has a mission coming up called Psyche, because that's the name of the asteroid they're going to visit. That asteroid is entirely metallic. It's, it'll have platinum, iridium, gold, nickel, iron, and because most other asteroids are rocky less interesting to us. So, you know, I look at all of this that we could be doing in space, fully using the resources that are available to us. And things that are rare on Earth are common in space. So here's a thought. I imagine in the distant future, with the, the solar system does become our backyard. And if we find an asteroid headed our way, we get on the phone to the asteroid miners and say, oh, could you um, swing over to that other asteroid and deflect it while you're up there? And, and just to say, oh, sure, we got this. It will happen in the next three weeks. Well, uh, what else could happen? We need more fresh water. Oh, there's a comet coming by. Let's lasso it, okay? Melt the water. Here's fresh water from a comet. A lake's worth of water in a comet. Since space has basically unlimited resources, if space becomes our backyard, it will remove an entire category of conflict from the annals of civilization going forward. And for me, that's worth it all. Well, that's a vision you've certainly painted for us. I love that space as our backyard. Neil deGrasse Tyson, thank you so much for coming on The Why with us. Happy, happy to serve.